Hi scholars, um, this video let's continue talking about equivalent fractions using multiplication. So as stated before um, in the other videos, equivalent fractions are fractions that are equal in value. And the numerator and denominator for the new equivalent fraction will increase, but that doesn't mean that the fraction is larger. They're actually equal. As long as whatever you do to the bottom and you do to the top, you should be okay. So looking at this example, we have half equals 3 sixths. So in this situation, I am doing 2 times 3 equals 6. So I'm going to do the same to the top. And so yes, they are equal. This one, 1 half equals 4 eighths. Well, 2 times 4 equals 8. 1 times 4 equals 4. So these are, all both, these are also equivalent. Now let's talk about something that's a little tricky that I'll be talking about in my next video, but I want to go ahead and tell you so you're aware. If I'm saying half is equal to 3 sixths and half is equal to 4 eighths, does that mean 3 sixths and 4 eighths are equivalent? Because if they're both equal to half, can't they be equivalent to each other? The answer is yes. If 3 sixths is equal to half and 4 eighths is equal to half, then they are also equivalent to each other. Now you're probably thinking, well now wait a minute, six times what equals eight? Three times what equals four? In this situation, that multiplication method that I taught you in videos one and two won't work. And so I don't want you to automatically dismiss it and say they're unequal. So you have to know that they're both equal to half and that's how you can say they're equal to each other. And I'll be teaching you this in the next video. Um, it's also attached to TEEK 4.3C. But I'm just going, in this video, I'm going to just talk more about equivalent fractions using other uh, ways to show you. So 1 half equals 3 six. 1, 2, 3 out of 6 and 1 half is equal to 4 eighths. 1, 2, 3, 4 eighths is also equal to half, so therefore 4 eighths is also equal to 3 sixths. Because they're both equal to half, they're equal to each other. Half is known as simplest form because it's the fewest number of pieces. I'll talk about that in the next video. Okay, I want to show you equivalent fractions through pictures with the process of cutting it so you can visually see how it works. So if I have half, as shown here, and I want to, let's say, double the number of pieces, which would be fourths, if I cut it, which is doubling the number of pieces, then instead of having one whole, one side out of two, now I have two shaded in out of four. So 1 half is equal to 2 fourths. Let's go back to half. Can't find my green marker. Just pretend the whole thing is colored in. And let's say I want to triple the number of pieces. So 2 times 3 is 6. So in this situation, this is how I would cut it. One, two, three, four, five, six pieces. One, two, three are shaded in. As you can see, I didn't shade in any extra pieces. And that's where people are getting the idea that if I have larger numbers and I'm, you know, they can't be equal, that, you know, it's, it's a bigger fraction. It's just more pieces. And so... As long as you're not shading in extra pieces, they're going to be equivalent. Let's say I decided to cut it into four pieces instead. So, or times it by four. So two times four is eight. One times four is four. So in this situation, it would be cut, cut, cut. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4 out of 8 are shaded in. And that is equal to half. Let's do one more. How about 
eight time timesing it by eight. So this is gonna get a little crazy. What if I did there we go. Sixteen pieces. So then one times eight would be eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces out of sixteen pieces. Okay, let's look at different fractions equivalent to half. We're going to look at it one piece at a time. So if I have one half equals to two fourths, I know that that is because two times two is four, one times two is two. One half is equal to three six because it's times three. One half times equals four eighths because it's times four. Hopefully you're picking up on the pattern now. You can even, of course, start from numerator, go down to denominator. This is times eight, times eight, times nine, times nine, times 10, times 10. So these are all equivalent to half. Therefore, I just listed it like this. One half equals two fourths, which also equals three sixths, which also is equivalent to four eighths, which is also equivalent to five tenths, six twelfths, seven fourteenths, eight sixteenths, nine eighteenths, ten twentieths. These are all equivalent to half. They are also all equivalent to each other. So scholars, if you remember, or if you haven't gotten them yet, depending what time of the school year you're looking at this video. Remember we got these multiple sticks? These multiple sticks um, show equivalent fractions. So when you have half, oops, when you have half, it's equal to two fourths because that's one times two and that's two times two. If you look at it separately, one times one is one, one times two is two, one times three is three, one times four is four, five, six, so on and so forth. If you look at the two's multiple sticks, two times one is two, two times two is four, two times three is six, two times four is eight, two times five is 10, two times six is 12, and so on and so forth. So you can actually set this up as an equivalent fraction and make them all equal to half. This is your starting point. This is doubled. This is half times three. This one is half times four, half times five, half times six, half times seven, half times eight, half times nine, half times 10, half times 11, half times 12. I didn't show those examples, the 11s and the 12s on here, but this is exactly what I just showed on the board. Let's look at another example. I could even do, something simple like two thirds. Two thirds is equivalent to four sixths. And I can prove that also with these pieces. Here's two thirds. Here's four sixths, just like that. Now, I can't show you that six ninths is equivalent to two thirds because I don't have pieces that are in ninths, but they do work when you multiply two times three, you get six, and then three times three, you get nine. Two thirds is also equivalent to eight twelfths. Here are eight twelfths right here. Notice four twelfths is equivalent to one third. So when you double that, you'll get eight twelfths is equivalent to two thirds. You can also do this with really high numbers. You can do something like eight-tenths. 
8 tenths is equivalent to 16 twentieths, 8 tenths is equivalent to 24 thirtieths, 8 tenths is equivalent to 32 fortieths. You could even do 11 twelfths. And if you're told to name equivalent fractions to 11 twelfths, you can do 11 twelfths. 11 times 2 is 22, 12 times 2 is 24. 11 times 3 is 33, 12 times 3 is 36. So 33 thirty-sixths is equivalent to 11 twelfths. Okay, now it's your turn. I want you to hit pause after I give directions and then click play and see if you got something similar to what I got. There are many different answers for this depending on how you approach it, but as long as you know you did it correctly, then it doesn't matter. So I want you to just list three equivalent fractions to two sixths, four eighths, and five sixths. And I'm going to show you afterwards how I did it with the multiple strips. So go ahead and hit pause and then press play when you're ready. Okay, so I could double. I can triple. I can even do something crazy like times 10. It works. For this one, I can double. I can do times 5. It doesn't matter as long as your multiplication is correct. I can do times 6, which would be 24 48. Now 5 6, I can triple it. I can do times 5. Whoops. And I can do times 20. Okay, now I'm going to get my multiples, my multiple strips, and we are going to compare it. So let's start with 2 sixths. Here's the 2's. Where did the 6ths go? Okay, so I said 4 twelfths when I times both by the top and the bottom by 2, 6 eighteenths when I multiply it by 3, the top and the bottom, and 20 sixtieths when I multiply it by 10, top and bottom. So if you look right here, when multiplied by 2, you get 4 twelfths. When you multiply the top and the bottom by 3, you get 6 eighteenths, just like I did. And then I decided to do times 10. So that's times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 20 sixtieths. Okay, then I have 4 eighths, 8 sixteenths, 20 fortieths, and 24 fortieths. So let's get that out. So when I times the numerator and denominator by 2, I got 8 sixteenths. When I multiply the numerator and denominator by 5, I got 20 fortieths right here. And then when I multiply the numerator and denominator by 6, I got 24 fortieths. Let's look at the next one, last one. 5 sixths. Five sixths. When it's multiplied by 3, numerator and denominator, you get 15 eighteenths. Now that's hard to see. That matches up. When you multiply by 5, you get 25 thirtieths. So times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then when you multiply by 20, which I don't have on, on my paper, but you would get 100 one twentieths. Please click on 4.5. To learn more about equivalent fractions, you need to click on the YouTube video that says 4.3c, Finding Equivalent Fractions Using Simplest Form, Division.